Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we look up to you. Apple, we have no power of Oh, we have no. Father, this is our confession today. That we don't have power of our own. Yes. In fact, there is no us without you. Yes. You are our sufficiency. Yes. You are our life. Yes. You are the bishop of our souls. You are the architect of our lives. Father, we declare today that without you we are nothing. Our sufficiency is of you. As we cry for divine help, Lord, help us. Save our souls. Strengthen our feeble nails. Let your grace be multiplied upon us. Lord, we decree that in your name we shall possess kingdoms for you. In your name, we shall pull down the altar of evil. In your name, we shall declare your sovereignty in every nook and cranny of this world. In your name, we shall come back rejoicing. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' most precious name, we are prayed. And the church say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I thank God for pastor. In fact, within the short while I've met you, sir, I have seen something unusual, something unique. You're only smiling. I think that is a good sign of God's faithfulness. As the Lord live it, we have every cause to rejoice in the journey of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, sir, for this rare privilege. It's a rare privilege to stand before the children of God and to minister the word of God. When I look at the word of God, the Bible says God said he has exalted his word more than his holy name. So if anybody is given the rare privilege to minister his word, it's indeed a rare privilege. I give all glory to God and I thank God, sir, for this rare privilege. And I thank the church too in the name of Jesus. I brought greetings from my general overseer, Reverend Dr. Paul Ginodio of New Covenant Church worldwide. And my senior pastor, Reverend Adoremi Asune. Hallelujah. Are we happy to be in the house next morning? Sorry, my voice is a little bit, a little bit uh, crack. I've been ministering since last week. Fr Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then night vigil again via yesterday morning. It's been quite hectic, but thank God for the grace. And that is what is causing a crack in the voice. Hallelujah. But a voice we hear tonight, I mean this morning, the voice of God in the name of Jesus. Can the uh, choir please wait on us as we worship the Lord. Hallelujah. When I came in, the Lord spoke to me, grace. Grace. And I know someone is here this morning that your life will be graced. You will meet with uncommon favor of the Lord. Amen. I don't know what you are going through. 
I don't know what you have experienced in the past. I don't know what you are going through currently. But I know that as the Lord live it today, the grace of God will locate you. Amen. The grace of God will be multiplied upon you. Amen. Before I pray, we need to understand what grace is. People say it's on common favor of the Lord. On deserved privilege. In the Bible, sir, the Bible talks about the thief on the right hand of Jesus. This is uncommon grace. This is great grace. There is grace, there is great grace. Acts chapter 4, verse 33. The Bible says, and great grace was upon the apostles. And when the Lord was opening my eyes to understand the efficacy of this grace of God, no man merits it. No man qualifies to have it. The thief on the right side of Jesus, he had been stealing, he had been killing, he had been maiming lives. That he got to a level that the law of the land could not contain him again. But rather, he was condemned to death. That he did not deserve to live any longer on the surface of the harp. His iniquities were so many to the end, to the point of executing him and killing him and exterminating him from the surface of the harp. Sir, he was already on the journey unto eternal damnation when he met with these greats. Sir, the, the thief on the right side never preached the gospel. He never made any sacrifice to have gone for nine vigils. He had never been on the mountain top. He has never fasted ever in his lifetime. He had no contribution to the work of salvation. He did not contribute to the work of righteousness in whatever form. But on that cross, on the cross of Calvary, he met with grace. What did he do? He only looked at unto Jesus and said, Jesus, you are going through what you never suffered. You were going through condemnation you were not guilty of. And he said, they knew that they were suffering for the cause of the works of their hands. He had compassion on Jesus. And sir, he requested for what he never deserved. No salvation. He never paid the price for the gospel. He never contributed any vine unto the work of the Lord, the work of the kingdom. He did not pay any price. He never suffered any cost for righteousness. And just said, Jesus, in your kingdom, remember me. I thought if Jesus were a man, he would have said, no, you don't deserve it. It's not of you to have it. You have no portion in it. Your life disqualified you. Everything you have done on the, on, on the surface of the heart never merited even a dime of the kingdom values. But what Jesus was saying, he said, today, not even tomorrow, his miracle was not postponed. Sir, a roll on Bame. Not even your beloved was promised. Do we remember when a mother came, not mother of John? The Z debate. He went, she went to Jesus because she noticed something. She noticed that her sons were too engrossed with the love of Jesus. Each time she might, she might want to give them domestic things to do at home, she would not find them. They would have gone to me with Jesus, learning at his faith. So the woman knew the affinity between her sons and Jesus. And that's why she was tempted to ask, Jesus, what would be the position of my children in your kingdom? They have labored for you. They have sacrificed for you. And Jesus Christ said, 
I don't know. It's of my father. In fact, sir, that as close as they were to Jesus, they were not promised. John beloved was not guaranteed. But a thief, a thief that even had been condemned by men and at the verge of destruction, just like I said, today, not tomorrow, you will meet me in paradise. me. Eru olorun ba mi Eru olorun ba mi o Shohun to ba ti pinu lo kon re ko se da to mi da duro mo ni Eru olorun ba mi Ko se da to le da duro, ko se da to le da duro ra ra, ko se da to le da duro, moni ko se da to le da duro ra ra, ko se da to le da duro, ko rumba mi, eru olo rumba. If I were you, I would stand on my feet and ask God, Lord, give me this great grace. Let your great grace accompany me in the journey of my life. All your faith will tie your own way for me. Grace, uncommon grace, great grace, grant unto me in the course of my journey of life. A report came to Jesus that a woman was caught in the heart of adultery. Not a reported speech. She was caught red and and she was brought before Jesus. And they knew that Jesus was a righteous judge. He would not execute jungle justice. He would not support Jungle justice and the woman was brought. All the woman was expecting was an immediate judgment, condemnation. And that was why she had to bury her head in shame, expecting a verdict. And Jesus was writing on the floor. And, the, and when Jesus Christ had finished, he raised his head up and said, if there's any man here that had never committed any sin, let it be the first to cast a stone at this woman. And the Bible says they were withdrawing one after the other. In fact, everyone was holding a stone. They were only waiting for Jesus' approval. For this woman to be stoned to death at the verge of destruction. Jesus saved her. And when all the accusers had withdrawn one by one, just like I said, woman, it took a while for that woman to raise her head up because she was expecting instantaneous judgment over her, over her life. And why she raised her head up, just like I said, woman, where are your accusers? Amen. Amen. Just like I said, where are your accusers? The woman turned 360 degrees. She couldn't find anyone. And just what I said, neither high condemn you. Go and sin no more. And it's available if you can ask. Lord, have mercy on me and my household. And grant unto us that great grace that would I know will be sufficient for my journey in this life. Lord, grant me great grace. Ask from the Lord. Father, I ask of you, in your mercy, that you will grant unto me and my household, and the body of Christ worldwide and our household, great grace that, we, that is sufficient for the journey of our life. Father, grant unto us, in the name of Jesus. 
There is someone in the house. You are passing through a situation that everything around you looks bleak. Everything around you looks puzzled. In fact, you don't have any, say, any sense of direction any longer. You are confused. Everything appears puzzled. But today, I can see light coming right into your life. Amen. Behind every tunnel, there is light. Yes. Today marks the end. Even this hour marks the end of that struggle. Amen. This minute puts an end to your confusion. Amen. I can hear a word unto you. For your shame, henceforth you will receive double honor. Amen. It is not of him that will it, not of him that run it, it's of God that shows mercy. The mercy of the Lord has located you now. Amen. God is asking me to tell you, that divine strength is released upon your feeble nails. Amen. The things that have been difficult for you to attain before, as from now, you begin to attain them on the pattern of gold. Amen. Nations that are far from you will come to look for you. As many as are ridiculed you in the past, they will come to sing your praise. In fact, the children of those who had afflicted you in the past, they will come to lead the dust of your feet. God is asking me to tell you, that young man, that you are not a forsaken person. You are a sought out. You are not a rejected foe. You are a sought out. As for everything about you will begin to manifest and express God's glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. That's another sister here. Your age is between 20 and 28. Hear with the word of God unto you. God says, I will help you. Forget about the things of old. Do not remember the things of the past. God is saying unto you today that is beginning a new thing. That new thing is a total departure from your past. If your past has, has, has produced unto you failure, henceforth is success. Amen. If your past has, prov has provided unto you the unfortunate incidences, today your story of life is being rewritten. Amen. I can hear God saying, your life is being beautified. Even the blessed people will call you blessed. Amen. Your testimony will become a reference point. Amen. And great shall be your company. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh, oh, there is someone here again this morning. There is an expectation before you. There is a thing, I know it, but I've not mentioned it. God has told me about it. There is something you are believing God for passionately. This is the word of God unto you. It is given over unto you. Amen. Your competitors, they will run and they will not be able to match with you. I can see God speaking on your behalf that it, whatever your case might be, it will favor you. Amen. The decision will be made in your favor. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes. 
You are more than what people say. Jehovah. More than what people say. You are more than what people say. Jehovah. More than what people say. Somebody here, you are surrounded by adversaries. Today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I decree via God's grace that your adversaries will be put to flight in the name of Jesus. You will turn 360 degrees, you will find them no more. They will run after you in vain. Amen. They will not be able to get at you. Amen. They have been put to flight. And I can see your path is being true to your destiny. Amen. This is great deliverance Amen. and great victory. Amen. Thank you because. You thank God because you never missed the service. Your destiny is guaranteed. Amen. Your future is secure. Amen. Because you have made God your light and your salvation. You have no cause to fear. You have no cause to be afraid. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we can't thank you enough. You are awesome. You are glorious. You are beautiful for all situations. In fact, we are short of words. To appreciate your kind gestures towards us. Father, we join the 24 elders in heaven. And we worship your majesty. Okay, another woman is here. Over that your child, you will rejoice. Amen. You will never have any cause to regret. Amen. Over that child, God is taking over. Amen. Woman, the word of God unto you is that the Lord says it will help you and you will hold your peace. Amen. Your peace will be multiplied. Amen. When the Lord turns the captivity of Zion, we are like them that dreams. This will be your portion. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Woman, God has taken over. Amen. The message concerning you, man, is that the siege is over. Amen. Great shall be your testimony. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Mm. There's another young lady here. You are finding it difficult in your academics. When you read, you forget easily, you don't assimilate. You have labored over reading, but when it comes, it appears as if you have never read anything. There is lack of retention of memory. If you're in the house, just lift up your hand. I want to pray with you. Lift up your hand out to pray with you. I ask of the Lord that the power 
of wisdom of the Lord will possess you. Amen. You will be distinguished for excellence. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The grace for wisdom is coming upon your life. Amen. Wisdom and knowledge from Abu. You have been taken from the rear to the forefront. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. We may be seated. As an encouragement unto that person who has been finding it difficult in our academics, when I was in secondary school and I was writing my uh, school start. That was 1984. My, the, the best result I had was two credits and one pass. Every other one F9. I went to God. In fact, I was still an unbeliever then. But when I gave my life to Christ, that year marked a turning point. My colleagues I thought they had gone ahead of me. I met them. I overtook some of them. And that will be a portion that six time. In the name of Jesus. God is taking from the rear to the forefront. And that is by his grace. And no man should glory. In Jesus name. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Psalm. The title of the message is The Affliction of the Righteous. Do you have a copy of the Bible? Psalm 34 and verse 19. Are we there? The Bible says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. At times we ask questions. Why is it that the more I serve God, the more I'm faced with challenges of life? Many have even harassed their pastors by saying, Pastor, since I've been in your church, as if, the, as if, if the church is owned by the pastor and not Jesus Christ again, the more I'm coming out of one, another one is catching up with me. And they have even challenged the veracity and the authenticity of the call of God upon many pastors. But I called them back and said, no, go back to the scriptures. Don't understand the scriptures. The Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. The word many, nobody can quantify. Nobody can measure. But what I know about the word many is that as you are experiencing one, do not lose, do not be, be clouded that it's over. Another one is about to catch up with you. And what's so interesting is that the affliction of the righteous is unique. Literally, affliction could be synonymous to strains, stress, hardship, hardness, difficulties. I don't call them problems. I rather refer to them as challenges. In fact, when Apostle Paul was writing to Timothy, in the second book of Timothy, Timothy chapter 2, I mean, second Timothy chapter 2, right from verse 2 downwards, he was admonishing Timothy, said, Timothy, endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ. It is then I understand, I understood that that means affliction is part of Christian package. Hardship is part of Christian package. Your stress, your strains, your challenges, your up, upweavers, your opera, your chaos, your challenges, they are what? Unique. Shagwe, ba? Tony ba bobanjiya, kin she be a roofing. At times, we go through some things that you may be tempted to have concluded that, oh, what I'm going through could have been as a result of my past sins, past sins which has been forgiven, then where is the potency of the blood of Jesus? 
Some might even say, oh, what I'm going through is as a result of what my forefathers had done in the past. Of course, it could be like that sometimes. Because God says, I'm the one that visited the iniquity of a man even far unto the fourth generation. And that was why when Abraham, I mean, Ahab sinned, and Ahab asked God for forgiveness. God repented and said, I will not bring those evils in your days, but I will bring it in the days of your sons. But whether what you are suffering for is a result of, the, of your sin of your lineage, it is still reversible. If God could have allowed you to have, to have, been, to have been passing through those things, your case is different. Because the affliction of the righteous will lead to affluence. The trial of the righteous will lead to triumph. The test of the righteous will lead to testimonies. The mess a believer has found himself or herself will lead to your message. That is why it makes your, your, your situation unique. Your affliction is different from the affliction of the unrighteous people. Our afflictions are different from the afflictions of the ungodly. No, they are different. It's different. So when a righteous shed tears, it produces his joy. But that may not be at the same, it may not be the same case with unbelievers. The Bible says, he that sweat in tears will reap in joy. So when people cry, I allow them to cry. They're not crying unto me, they're crying unto God. Listen, when the righteous, the righteous do cry, it's scriptural. The Bible says, when the righteous cry, I hear him. So, sir, maybe because I'm an evangelist, I'm not a pastor. Pastors, they are too, they are too, how do I put it? They are too compassionate. When you are crying, they, they, they provide you a shoulder to put your hair. When you are crying, they give you an handkerchief to, to clean off the tears. When a righteous cries, a single drop of your tears will produce many joy. Psalm 30 verse 5. Oh, I thought it was going to be. I don't want to say it verbatim. So that some people will not say, yeah. is he reading the Bible? Psalm 30 verse 5. But his anger endured for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy come forth in the morning. So. The end of a believer is not the night. There must be a resurgence of a glorious morning. So, the, what you are crying over has its own duration. At the expiration of its duration, it ceases to exist. And that is why your affliction must release you at the shore of your affluence. Your pains must produce your pleasure. When you are experiencing any form of shame, it's for your future glory. The Bible says, for your shame, you receive double honor. I have experienced a lot of shames. Sir, those shames have landed me in my fortunes. Sir, I would rather glory in my affliction because my affliction will produce my affluence. I would rather glory in my pains because my pains will bring about my pleasure. I would rather glory in my trial because my trial will bring me a triumph, a triumphant experience. I would rather glory in my mess because my mess will turn out to be a message. Let's go back to Psalm 34 verse 19. Psalm 34 verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them from them all. Can you see all? 
Which means no affliction of the righteous is licensed to, to last forever. And no one is licensed to dominate over you. No one is licensed to get rid of you. No one is licensed to overcome you. And that is why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 43, it says when you pass through waters, it will not overflow you. When you pass through fire, you will not be burnt. Sir, do you know that such a promise contravenes the law of nature? Do I have a witness in the house? It contravenes the law of nature. The law of nature naturally is that when you when water over when water gets to you, it overflows. Because nothing can stop water. And that is why the case of uh, uh, that happened recently in the US could not be contained. Houston. Flawed. Even in Benway State, flawed. So when, when water comes in its volume, it will take God to stop it all. And naturally, when you are being filled with volumes of water, those, the volume of water is meant to overflow you. But God says you will not. Which means it will bring a relief package. So that rather for, for the, I mean, rather for that water to submerge you, you will float on top. The sciences could not, even to today, understand the mystery. It can never be scientifically proven. It can never be scientifically discovered. Only for me. It's only God that can do it. Do you know the reason why you're, you're, you are experiencing those things is that your life will be an expression of his glory. Hello, church. Let's quickly look at the people that went through their own ordeal too. Now, before we go there, do you know, Isaiah 43, when it says, you will, when you pass through water, when you pass through fire, it will not burn you. Do you know that the word when, for English students, that means there will be a point in time in the course of your life you have to go through it. It's not if. If will have been probability. The word if will have been what? Probability. That means some may go, some may not go through it. But when the word says when, that means there will be a time in the course of your journey of life that you will go through it. But do you need to be afraid? No, because it is written in the Bible that the water will not submerge you. The fire will not gut you. Let's take a leaf from the three Hebrews in the book of Daniel chapter 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They stood for righteousness. They resisted the king's order for them to compromise their faith. They said no. But 21st centuries, believers, they have compromised their stand before God. Many, many times. 21st century believers, they have compromised what they profess to be in the face of temptation. But for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they did not. The first experience they had was that they were given national disgrace. They were not moved. They were evicted from the national post. They were not moved. The king was wrong. And a report was brought to the king. Three Hebrews said, they will not bow to your graven image. He said, go and call them for me. Sir, the word of God cannot be broken. Hallelujah. Proverbs says, the, li I mean, the righteous is as bold as lion. And when they got before the king, they were not afraid. The righteous they were bold. And they said, King, Praventure, it was not well related to you. Praventure, when they were giving you a report, they made some words. Praventure, our, our sentence was not presented as we had pronounced it. Oh, yeah, the king. We have made up our minds. We do, if, if they even, they even said, uh, said that we, can't, we, do not, we are not careful to answer you in this way. is for strategy. 
And they said, we have made up our minds not to bow unto your graven image. They said one thing, sir. We know our God will deliver us. Sir, that is where most Christians stops. Most Christians, they stop at that. When the things are rosy, they appreciate God. But when it's otherwise, they don't appreciate God. But sir, I've come to realize that the people that are there are those who are ready to go extra miles. What saved them was that at the initial stage, they had made up their mind. They said, we know faith, assurance in God, total dependence in God. This God will deliver us. But they went extra mile. If at all, he will not deliver us. So that is where their strength lied. We will not bow. And every believer that will make an impact in this generation must go extra miles. The Bible talks about something in the book of Psalm 91. The secret place of the Most High is not conspicuously located though. If you want to abide under the secret place of the Most High, you have to go extra miles and dig deep spiritually. The more you dip, the more your strength. You know, sir, the strength of the tree we see, as tall as it is, the strength is down. It's in the volume, it's in the strength of, its, of the root. When you see a tree that stands tall, look at the root. It has a formidable root that has gone down, down, down deep. The deeper you go, the more you'll be strengthened in the Lord. So it was the determination they made. And that was exactly what helped Job. Affliction will come, sir. Money, you cannot run away from it. But God has only promised us victory if we do not chicken out or falter. And that was exactly what helped Job. Job said, I know my reading might live it, even in this affliction. Even though he stays to me, yet will I still trust in him. No wonder Apostle Paul says, neither death no angel can separate me from the love of Christ. Not even death. Not even suffering. Either of now or to come. This is the language of the victors. This is the language of the righteous. This is the language of the saints. And when they, when they took them before the king, the king was wroth. The ah uh, ah, uh, they didn't go yabai. They knew that they could not be afraid of the earthly king when the heavenly king is behind them. It's not, they, are not being, they were not being rude, but they were being factual. And the king was wroth and said, increase the fullness by seven times. Listen, friends, don't be, don't be threatened by the threats of the people of the world. Don't be what? Threatened by the threats of man. The only threat you have to be threatened about is of God. Man, and told you to go to the Lord. to go to the Lord. You have to go to the end of the day. The Bible talks about a man. The man is like a flower who appears in the morning and the flower falls in the evening. A neon. You are afraid of man? You don't only do back to the jockey. And the king was wrong. And they went to increase the fire by seven times, the furnace. Hello? Why they were being taken there? They, would, they, they had been informed that they had, they had increased, I mean, they had increased it. But they were encouraging themselves in the Lord. The encouragement is, of the Lord is what we need as brethren. Perhaps the song they were singing was that. This war, this not my home. I'm just passing through. If heaven is not my home, then Lord, what can I do? The angels beck on me, and the heavens open door. And I can feel at all in this world anymore. These are the songs that will make you to see beyond this world. Not the songs like, Asha Koloda Abuja. I don't listen to such songs. They lack life. 
They have no message. In fact, they corrupt your mind. Pajero Miho. What's that song? Or Jesus, Jesus na helele. Jesus na wajau. These are the songs that they lack spiritual values. They lack spiritual nutrients. But where are the songs that says? So if we, are, we fill our soul with this kind of song, when death comes, we will not be afraid. Ah, you get the man law. I want to get to the kingdom of God faster than expected. But are you even sure if you are going to make heaven? They were singing songs and hymns that, was, that were encouraging them when, as they were being taken to the fire. Sir, they, had, they, had, they, were, they were seen beyond the fire. Friends, look beyond your funnel. I mean your tunnel. If you look beyond your tunnel, you will find light behind the tunnel. Look beyond those afflictions, you will see affluence. Look beyond those texts, you will see testimonies. They look beyond the furnace and they saw into eternity. And that was why they were not discouraged. They did not go out begging and say, King, no, we will reverse our words. No, King, we will reverse our statement. No, king, please. No, they were not begging. If you, a man begs God, he cannot beg a man. If you kneel before God, you will stand tall before men. Your case must be settled in the spirit realm before you see it manifesting on the physical. They were seen beyond the earthly possession. They were seen beyond the, the earthly appellation. They were seen to the heavenlies and eternity. And when they were thrown into that fire, Sir, the rema in this passage was that, I mean, is that when they were being thrown into the fire, they were still referred to as three Hebrew children. Three Hebrew children. What a shallow identity. Your fire will only refine you. It will engulf you. It won't destroy you. It will only polish you to be that which God has proposed you to be. And that's why you have to glory in your affliction. And we are suffering so that that glory will be made manifest. Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says, all these things he went through, we will still go back to it. He looked at them and said, they are mere affliction that cannot be compared to the what, eternal weight of glory. So why? How did he discover that they were, they were mere afflictions? Because he was, able, he was able to weigh it. Side by side with heavenly glory. And he saw them as nothing. But when you begin to weigh your challenges with the heartly, with, when you base it on the earthly measurement, you'll be discouraged. Weigh it with heavenly values. You will not discover that they are nothing. Now, as they were in the fire, three people were thrown in the fire, right? The king himself was the one that attested to the fact that I can see four people. Your enemy will be your spectator, spectator. God will make your enemy to be, the, to be spectators of your wonders. God will make your spectators to be spect I mean, your enemies to be spectators of the wonders of God in your life. Nebuchadnezzar became spectator. And he was able to cite the appearance of the fourth person. In fact, he was what I said. He said, the fourth person, the appearance is like the appearance of the son of man. Whatever is in you that is of God that people refuse to appreciate and they refuse to work on, a situation is coming when they have no option than to accept. Was that not what could uh, Nebuchadnezzar had refused to accept in the past? It was only in that fire that those people were refined and that that real image was made open unto him. It was so glaring to him again. So he had not gone through that fire that image of God in those three Hebrews will not have been made, I mean, revealed to him. I say on this note that your affliction is producing your affluence. 
So, he now saw something strange. Fire is meant to God, but the fire was giving them cooling effects. And when he was to be addressed, them say, "You sons of Most High, come out." What he had refused to take at the initial stage, the affliction they went through revealed it to him. What you are going through is only telling the devil the substance of which you are made up of by God. Can I hear somebody saying amen? amen? What you are going through is only proving to the devil the substance of which you are made up of by God. Sir, and they were coming out. The king asked to re-decree. Who says whatever decree has been made concerning cannot be re-decreed? They have never seen the glory of God in you. If they have seen the glory of God in you, they will make a decree of the initial decree they may have made against you. And that re-decree will favor you. And the king said, as from today, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be served throughout the land. Why was it possible that they went extra mass? They did not say, they did not stop at this God will deliver us. So if they stopped at that, when they were being led to the fire, they would have renounced Jesus. They would have renounced God. They would have compromised. They would have substituted God in their life for King, Neb King Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, King Nebuchadnezzar's image. But they went beyond that. Though it did not deliver us, yet we will not bow. Then I come to realize that the word of God cannot be broken, sir. Just what I even said. He said, as many that want to lose their lives for my sake, they will find it. But as many that they will not lose it, they will eventually lose it. In God, you can't experience any loss. Throw your life into his arms. Sir, till today, the fourth person has not come out. Are you, are you, are you, are you amazed that God is still in that fire? Yes, he is. Do you know what? His name is Jehovah Shama, the Lord that is there. Before you are here, I'm here already waiting for you. Do you know, sir, why he has, he has never come out? Because he knows that 1,001 believers will still be thrown to the fire of affliction. As he was waiting to receive the three Hebrews, he's waiting to receive you. And that is why the fire will never burn you. Even the smoke, you can't even smell it. Are you afraid of affliction? God is already waiting for you. Ever before they imagine it, to throw you there, God is, he has, he's already waiting for you. So when you are coming, they might be thinking that they are, they are dumping you into the affliction of life, but they are dumping you into the hands of Jesus. Who will bear you on his eagle's wing? And will cause you to fly. And when you walk, you will not be weary. When you run, you will not faint. Another one of note. Is Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Is it going to be projected from verse 6? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 6. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. Second Corinthians 4, verse 6. Okay, let's quickly move to 8 because of our time. We are troubled. On every side. Can you even read that? That means no, no breath of comfort. Huh? It should nick out. Troubled on every side. Troubled on every side. As anointed as it was, we are troubled on every side. So anointing does not guarantee, does not erode your suffering as a believer. If you suffer with him, we, be glory, we shall be glorified with him. If we carry our cross, we are eligible to wear the crown. Yet, not distress. Can you see the language of faith? Not the language of self-pity. Ah, pastor. Pastor. Pastor, thank God, in spite of all those, I mean, your, those eyes I've seen, they have never gone blind. Do you know why they have never gone blind? They have been preserved to witness your best. We are perplexed. Not in despair. Sir, 
21st century believer. If they are past pay, they say, Ha, ah, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. Do you know the meaning of perplex? Ha, ah, Ojuari. We stumble 1,001 times. That's not the language of the righteous. The language of the righteous will always downplay the devil. We always under, undermine the devil's strategies. Cast down, I mean, persecuted, but not forsaken. But if we tell you, ah, we were persecuted, beaten, rejected, we suffered. Mm -mm. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Go ahead. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Go ahead. It's a long passage. For we which live are always delivered unto war. For whose sake? Do you think Jesus will fall in his hands? If they knew that killing Jesus will have produced miracles that the world cannot stop, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. Listen. Let the enemies do their wars. Their wars will produce your joy. Let's learn from Joseph. The life also of Jesus shall might be made manifest in our mortal bodies. Go ahead. So death worketh in us, but life in you. We are we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe, and thereof I have spoken, as also, I mean, we also believe and therefore speak. Mm -hmm. Knowing that he which will raise Jesus from the, I mean, just up the Lord Jesus shall raise us also up by Jesus and shall present us with you. Let us rise on our feet. Let's go to verse 16 quickly. Verse 16. For which cause we faint not. Sir, this complements what. That if you faint in the day of your adversity, your power is small. Failing in the day of adversity is not an excuse. The Bible has already, has already said it. If you faint in the day of adversity, your power is small. And that version says, how shallow is your understanding and knowledge about God? For which cause we faint not, but all our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed Day by day. Go ahead. For, can you see? Language of faith. He diffused it. He underrated the devil. He dismayed the devil. He, under, he, under, he underestimated the devil. Devil, all I've gone through. I've weighed it side beside the glorious and the eternal values. There are nothing even to be thought about. Sir, do you know why people magnify their suffering? It's because they still measure their suffering with human measurement. If you place it side by side, heavenly values, heavenly glory. Hey, Ogoye. Oh my God. Sir, by God's grace, in the course of mission, I've been to several countries, I've been to several continents. Sir, check one of them college you. They are the Arabs. I've been to Dubai, I've been to Allahin. When you say, I call them architectural madness. And I said, if, some, if a place could be as beautiful as this, heaven will be much more. So, if you want Arabs in here, some of them can afford to, to make their floors in gold. Check where they have the gold. They have gold. They can afford to make their. I've seen them coming out. Arabs in Nigeria, I want to push you. I want to push you, sir. No Arabs leaves his territory. When you get to Emirates, United Emirates, it's a combination of how many? I think four or five: Dubai, Sharjah, Alain, and um, they don't travel, sir, because they don't work. What they live on is what the dividends of the government. Tourism, 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 
When you want to see the beauty of an Arab, sir, they buy Dubai, they buy him, Abishaja, they buy Lossi Besa. They come out in the evening to display wealth. They buy motor from what? In your in your in your lodge, no no Abuke, okay, Abu Abu Abuke, okay, right? Sir, when you see their women, sir, no matter who they are, to keep the lane, no matter if you go to see, yeah, I mean. Touring. But all these things cannot be compared to heaven. Hallelujah. If you have the understanding, nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Not even death. So today, you have me? And that was what I experienced, sir. Okay, maybe I should ask you to sit down because it might take a while. I think bad for four hours. Just leave it at that. I might be a guru. For our light affliction. Now, Pastor was saying something. And that comes in my testimony. And we continue with that. I hope I'm not taking your time. Okay. Ah. 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 Do you know it's costing me something? It's cost, costing me my career. By now, my, my colleagues are already professors, associate professors. I don't care. So what God has given to me, they can never match it. Even professors, they confess. They say, ah, evangelist. They know. Sir, so God has blessed me. I will continue to bless me with everything that pertains to life and godliness. Good things. So I don't run after them all. Even when they come, I ask God, should I take it or not? God must convince me. Even gifts, God must convince me. Now, what our light affliction, which is but for a moment, sir, how did he arrive at this? He had reached a particular spiritual realm. He was operating on a higher frequency in the spirit because he, he, what he has in view was eternity. So if anything, anything happens to him, in our way, it can he match heavenly glory? Can he match heavenly attainment? Can he match heavenly values? No. And he now sum everything. Sir, type of 21st century, the pastor, what he passed, Apostle Paul passed through. Sir, at the call, with 20 Luriel. My experience, so so please. My affliction, so so. 25 facts of becoming. I don't believe on those. Are they 25? Why can't you say some? Some. If you limit yourself to that 225, you will suffer, the, you will suffer a great deal. Because the word of God cannot be boxed. Now, sir, when I was going, by God's grace, this is my 27 years in the ministry. By October, I will be 27 years in the ministry. I'm not saying preaching. I've been preaching before then. But what God led me to ministry 27 years ago, almost 27 years ago. And this faithful day, I just saw that I used to minister at Lauren or your, but Obomosho had not been saturated, had not been visited. So I now told people, I said, I'm having a body for Obomosho. Let's go to Obomosho and plan a crusade. That was 1990. We started that 1995. So by 1996, we're going, for, we said, okay, let's just go to Obomosho first for prayer and fasting for three days. To my brother, we'll show you. She might show you. Because we're going to go to Obomosho. We're going to go but more by money, eh? GRA within LA, me the video. I was born in Badon. Money, so that's GRA in LA. Please give God a big hand. You are well situated here. Sir, more grace, greater grace, and greater exploits in Jesus' name, in righteousness. So, uh, we now agree that let us go and have three days fasting and prayer. We took my Bible, show Rushon. When it comes to evangelism, rugged. So we're going. That time, 1996, March. We're going. That time, I, I was writing my exam. I was doing my master's there at UI. So I, in fact, I read overnight. So I quickly went to the room to change. So I was to write three, three to six papers. After the three to six paper, 
I had already broke my briefcase. And I went to pick transport fare, going to Ogumosho. It was getting to night. I went, that was, I, I preached from Ibadan to, Ogum, to uh, Oyo in the, in the bus. So I decided to rest. I, me, and I'm starting under night vigil. Let me quickly rest. At least from Ogumosho, from Oyo to Ogumosho, I will be able to rest. I was sleepy and the accident happened, of course. It was fatal. In fact, when it happened, they did not discover me. But I was the target. So I had come out of the vehicle, and what happened was that God kept my soul. I was unconscious. If I were to be conscious, I would have bled to death. So I was, and it was in a ditch in a bush. So when they had, they now counted themselves. I want to look at so they now brought torchlight. And they discovered me under the bus. They, they, were, they were able to bring me out. And I was unconscious. But when they happened, when that happened, I was just calling Jesus. It just kept my soul. So by the time I was brought out, I was in the pool of blood. So I now regained my consciousness. The pain was much. And she had a in '96. So, one want to draw, I want to draw, one want to be a But God does put it upon a Muslim, an allergy. He was the one that added the custom, I mean, immigration in Badon then. The immigration office used to be at, uh, beside custom. He was the one, I think, uh, Zona controller, controlling by some many states. So, he just stopped. And they said, sir, we need your help. Brand new 504 car. And people, some people were saying, ah, from a state motor union, what do you mean? Life put him there. That's how he took me, and they dropped me at a medical center. And it, all the money he had, he put it back, an allergy. And he left his complimentary card, allergy la wow. So they were treating me. So the following morning, because it was ready in the night, and when you call Martin, Martin read to me, I even got this mobile phone. I only be here by daily. We are, she was just jealousy because, and they were expecting me in the morning. So by the time it was in the morning, okay, in the middle of the night, the doctors came to me, and they said, "Sir, we want to put it your leg. We need why? Your leg has been badly damaged. We need no. I'm not agreeing." So they now had their meeting. I want to make doctor one for the Kori. The nurse said, ah, I want to help this man. And he's, oh, he's proving difficult. Let's sedate him and then chop his leg off. So one of the medical team, I never knew him, he now came to me. He said, are you evangelist under contract? I said, yes. He said, some years back, I was under your administration. So, 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 town. Only me, Omar. Only I know you. Only you want to apportate to them. Only no. Only I'm not agreeing. He now went back to them. He was the one that got used for me, he instilled the fear, said, if you amputate him, he might backfire because he's a man of God. If I don't give his consent, to let, do it, let us do it. Thank God they did not do it. I had already had internal bleeding. They did not know. Broken ribs, clutch blood close to the heart. If they had gone ahead, they would have just passed me into glory. And you know, I'd be privileged to listen to this message. Of course, I would have been free in heaven anyway. And they stopped. You know, some believers say, ah, what's, what's, what kind of man of God want to save his life? He was the one that stopped them. So, please, have integrity. Your integrity will speak for you one day. So, he was stopped. Then, me and my mom, my mom, lead, uh, professor, um, uh, uh, Adebo, very close to him. Then, my brother was even very close to him. My brother was, was just like his son, Pastor Benga Kondi. So when they had, they had to phone Ogumosho through I mean, a table phone. So they now spoke with the medical director then, who was also was my brother's friend. They now said, sir, I'm going to release your brother because of relationship, because we were not too sure if we could make it to Ibadan. Because by the following morning, I was already swelling up. But Professor Adebo had arranged an ambulance from who used to come and pick me at the Bumasho. So very early in the morning, 
Amblan Saint Tite. Professor Adebo of Blessed Memory. He was right at usage. He had mobilized different consultants. They were waiting for me. So by the time the ambulance landed at usage, first of all, usage, we always carry tests before they do anything. When they carry out the test and they discovered that I had gotten internal bleeding right from the scene of the accident, which was the previous day, Professor Adibo said, no, this is not the boomosh I used to know. He was, he was, he was, he was annoyed. That, and they wanted to carry out the amputation under this condition. They like, just pass the, I mean, pack the boy off. So, and that's why I'm still close to the present CMD. Professor Longe, he was the one that operated my leg. And Professor, ah, I've forgotten his name now. Okuladi, yes, sir. Both of them, they operated my leg. Even when they saw it, when they were in a preach, in a preach, I mean, in the theater room, brethren had filled the place with prayers. They attested to it that when they were walking, devil was present. All their surgical instruments were just cutting. Everything was, was just cutting. And they were praying too. Thank God. So, Professor Adibu that came to me and said, Sunday, that was the best we can offer you to amputate the leg. But thank God they did not do it there. So, before they amputated the leg, they had already removed the ear, the clutch blood. And by the time I saw my leg chopped off, I never lost my peace. I never queried God. Young man, Already a, a postgraduate student at US 95. My colleagues are already professors by now. I was not moved. So many ministers, I will not mention name. In the bottom, they came there. Some of them were crying like a baby. I said, no, I'm bouncing back. When I say ministers, this is bottom. They were present. I was the one, I was the one even that was encouraging them. I said, with crutches, I will preach the gospel. Sir. God told me on the seabed. Two weeks, two months, I could not move sideways. Besso. I was hospitalized for three and a half months. God told me on the seabed that I'm, I've ceased from laboring. Sir, to the glory of God, when I opened the scriptures across the world, they said, they have been reading this place, they have not discovered this truth. I say it's Rema. I have got into that realm that I cannot but to draw the hand of God down through my affliction. As a believer, you must pass through your own. Sir, I thank God today because I went through what I went through. By God's grace, I have ministrations virtually every week outside this country and outside the country. I cannot even handle them since 96. I've been doing this now. And the grace is always available. Many are the afflictions. Abisa. I got married in 1997 to my faithful wife who also went through. We, we, I was a courtship then. Beautiful woman. She never changed her mind. By that time we got married, sir. I was going about preaching and ministering to those who are waiting and they were carrying their babies. And for the first six years, we had no child to carry. And there was no medical problem. That was the time, 99, I was preaching at the Gospel Faith Mission in Ijebode. So a couple came and they said, sir, we have been married for two years now. My own had already passed two years. Sir, as I was moved by prayer, I said, as the Lord leave it by this time next year, you carry your baby. And I said it. The following year, sir, I was in that city again, in another church. They not saw the poster and traced me down. So when they were mentioned, I said, do you remember us? I'm a baby in New I come across faces. They now reminded me, you were in this same town about a year and two months ago. So, so church. Okay. We were the one that you pray for. This is the baby. I carried the baby. I was dancing. I had none to carry. A woman was believing God for the fruit of the womb for 10 years. She, never, she had a child. The first child was already 10 years, and she had never gotten it. She had been to several crusades. A deeper life woman. She came. We agreed together. And God told me all she had to do was done some yokes to be broken in her life. I lay my hands on her. She leaned. After some time, she woke up. I said, God has given you the victory. Sir, 
and I had none to carry. I was ministering to those who were believing God for the fruit of the womb, and God was answering. And my wife never had anyone to carry. But the peace was there. I said, woman, at the time's appointed time, at God's appointed time, you will carry your baby. You will have more than enough. She said, amen. I understand affliction is not easy, but the grace will be available. Will be made available. At times, I wake up in the middle of the night to weep, and my wife will be crying. I say, woman, what's your problem? Ah, ain't too bad to be more Christian be in. Eh, what is your to the glory of God, our last born is in, I've just been admitted to secondary school now. That's our last born. And to make it interesting, when you see my daughter, our first born, whose birth was delayed for six years, people always are six years to our age. Then what is lost? Nothing. We have a friend last week that came from the United Kingdom. But to read, don't tell me, only what university are you now? And I said, no. I'm just going to SS1. How old are you? I'm here to be 13. Eh? And you're looking like 1920. My daughter has a big stature. Big stature. Beautiful stature. Beautiful to behold. And I come and say, six years. People always had six years to her head. Then what is lost? Nothing. The difference between those who are being celebrated and you that are here to be celebrated is all the time. If you wait, your own time will come. You will be celebrated. I understand some afflictions could go along with shame and ridicule. Your ridicule will turn to miracle in the name of Jesus. And let me quickly have this before we pray. In the course of waiting now, then we had not moved to our house. We were living at, I mean, at a GRA somewhere and then we were at Upper Flat. So my wife was driving. So I'm more to and lay in other flats. They were playing outside. So one moment in Bokan Loshi Gate. One year, mommy has come, mommy has come. Let's go and open the one. Wait, me one looky. That could be Mongo Bodonso. Woman say, Who is mommy? Auntie me. And if really we have had our children as a time due, I'm watching John Moy alone. I'm more will buy money alone. And I went to God. So I don't pray for your enemy to die. You. I don't pray for them oh, to die. Because sometimes in the past, before you knew Christ, you were someone's enemy. If they had prayed you dead, would you have been able to serve God today? Because I, I tell people that pray for your enemies to witness your, your goodness. It will humble them. Sir, so the first name is ceremony. Woman, one bell. The Bible says, Joe. Ah, one you were long. You know, my she knew you. But she has been with us in, the, in, our, in, our, in our trying periods. She mocked us in our, in our trying years. The second, the name of the second baby, she was there. The name of the third baby, she was there. By God's grace, our last born is entering secondary school by September. What is lost in your life? Nothing. In the book of Numbers, the Israelites went out and they came back after the journey and they counted themselves. They said nobody was lost in spite of the battle. Compromising is not worth it though. When God says wait, it does not mean never. Your, your delay is not denier. No, 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 no. See, the longer your miracles are being delayed, the better they will come out. So, do you know that to the glory of God, thank God the children did not come as a time due because we probably would not have had money to take care of them. So, when they came, every year they go to United Kingdom for vacation till this year. So, a lot more don't you. Your affliction will produce your affluence. Apostle Paul says, for our light affliction. So, and I went through I'm using the processes. It has nothing to do about my life. No restriction. I can stand when I, when I, VG, I can stand on my feet without sitting down for five hours. I drive both manual and automatic. It has never affected anything. In fact, it has added to me. It has added the glory of God to me. And most of the people that, in, that are inviting me for administration, 90% of them are not aware that I have this. 
Kemano biya piti mo fi invite niyo. They don't know. It is the anointing that speaks. Until I tell them, and I'm not ashamed to tell them, because you conquered the dragon by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. Our light affliction. If you look at our children, the lady, I asked of the Lord. I said, Lord, my first child will be, I want a girl. And God answered. If you see my daughter, hey, she's as pretty as an angel. I said, Lord, you could have given me anything lesser than that because I waited. Your delay will produce your Samuel. And my second born, I said, God, Lord, my second born, I want a boy. And God answered. When we had the first try, nine months later, you almost take him. I said, Lord, give me a meal. And that's why I called him Samuel. By the time we had Samuel, we had Samuel, she gave back to Samuel. Six months later, she took him again. And we have David, priest. And I told her, I said, do you, do you want more? She said, no, 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 no. I said, if you want more, God will baptize you with 12 apostles. She said, no, I'm okay. Now listen, what is not enough in your life will become more than enough. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our light affliction, but for a moment, moment means it won't last long. It's only running its course. It's as its expiration. It's as its duration. It's for a moment, though. Why, sir? Because it cannot be equated with the glory that will soon be shown in you. Why am I saying that my colleagues are always ahead of me? Because I don't have time to write papers. I know in academia, you have to write papers. Papers in book. You might tell me, your long law. What they are writing is earthly value. Me, I'm working the work of eternal value. I'm telling you, as to the glory of God, in my university, students rated. They rated me when it comes to delivering lecture. They rated me above my professors. When I, do you know that when I handle my lectures, after my lecture, my students will clap as if I've come to deliver a paper. I even send some students that are not part of my class because I, have, I, I, I lecture a class class, about 400 people. I'm in international relations unit. And that was the time I was doing strange phrases. I said, are you part of this class? As there were, there were many, about 400. They now said, sir, we enjoy your lectures. That's why we are from other department. I said, thank God. So as a professor, and does not make an impact of what. If it costs you something, but it will land you at the shore of glory. In fact, any of the semester break, I would have traveled out of the country, ministering in different countries. At times, my HOD, by the time he calls me and he doesn't get me, two times, he'll say, Ah, what is it, Lord? My name is your law. I want to complain. I want to call me. I want to get to me. I want to pay HOD. 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 Why? Because I'm seen beyond the tunnel. I'm seen beyond the earthly attainment. I'm seen to the eternity. So that was what helped Apostle Paul. He waged. He compared what he was going through with the glory that will soon be shown. He now said, for our light. In fact, they were not light to, this is the language of faith. Our light affliction, which is bought for a moment, working for us who have been afflicted, a far more. English, we call it tautology. It's not tautology. Grammatically, it's tautology. But spiritually, it's wavy. A far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. That means it's, you know, it's unquantifiable, immeasurable. Next, next verse. Verse 18. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Rise on your feet. Somebody is here. Because of what you have gone through, you have concluded that God has forsaken you. Mm -hmm. 
the Lord says, can a mother forsake a sucking child that she will not have compassion for the son of her womb? The Bible says, if it were possible for them, I, the Lord, I will not forsake you. For I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands, and thy words are continually before me. He's faithful. Zion says, the Lord has forsaken me. That may be your own song today. But God says, can a mother forsake a sucking child? That she would not have compassion for the son of her womb. The Bible says, if it were possible for them, I, the Lord, I would not forsake you. Psalm 40, I mean, Isaiah 49 from verse 14. Isaiah 49, 14. That's what I just quoted. Verse 15 says, can a mother forsake a sucking child that not have his, I mean, compassion for the son of her womb? God says, if it were possible, I, the Lord, I will not forsake you. For I have graven thee upon the palms of my hand. So what God is saying is that you are, not for, you are not forsaken. Neither are you forgotten. Your delay will bring out a miracle. The reason why it's taking longer time to come, it will take a longer time for something good to become better, much more for it to become best. Your, your miracle will be best. The longer it takes, the better it will manifest. I have made this too small. In my eyes, oh Lord, forgive me. I believe in the love. Thank you, Jesus. That you are able to help me. But now, oh Lord. But now, oh Lord. See my wrong in my heart and show yourself strong and in my heart and with my soul, oh Lord, be somebody close to you that you know that is expecting come forward fear is power of God Almighty in the house let me use this testimony to encourage you sons and ma and probably whoever you are standing in for I have a cousin who is based in another kingdom each time I'm in the United Kingdom for ministration, she will always ask me to come round, at least to have some rest before I come to Nigeria, because they know that by the time I'm in the UK, ministration from one city to another, they'll have booked around. Or anytime I'm going on vacation, she will always ask me to come. She was married for nine years, no child. Sir, stickingly rich. Come on, talk away. Because the husband was working for a company in London, and she is a social worker well paid they are favored so I used to refer to her as Yabiji prophetically so there was a time she came to Nigeria probably four years ago and she said uncle Tisumi 
Munino. I was one there. God will do it. Mwani, I'm provoking the spirit. And I change your name to Yabeta. So the last time I was in London and I visited that, I said, by the time I will come to your house next, you will no longer be few. I prayed as I was led. Sir, you better love you. Um, uh, uh, a testimony is on the Facebook, I mean, on the internet, carrying the prayer. In fact, okay, one with Baboni Beta. His name now on, on social media is Baboni Beta. Sir, in the course of my administration, about three months ago in England, I visited them in London. And I remind, reminded her, I said, This is my next visit. Are you now few? Say, Uncle God is faithful. Triplets. Triplets. The longer it takes, the better it will manifest. Your delay is not denier. When God says wait, it does not mean never. Your sorrow will produce, will produce joy. Are you ready? Be expectant. And if you are waiting for somebody, be expectant. Lift up your hands as a sign that you want to receive. Father, I brought another set of people before you this morning. Believing you alone that you are the one that can do it. And there's nothing difficult for you to do. In fact, in Jeremiah 29, 11, you say, I know the thoughts I have towards you. They are the thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a hope and a future and expected end. Father, let their hope be granted. In the name of Jesus, I command every close womb in the name of Jesus, Ephata be open. I command those wombs who no longer be empty. They are strengthened and anointed to carry babies. Both male and female in Jesus' name. By this time next year, by the message of the Lord, by the grace of God, by this time next year, in the same vein, it was pronounced by Elisha to the Shunammite woman. I pr pronounce unto those people. Expecting the fruit of the womb. That by this time next year, you will use your hands to carry your babies. In the name of Jesus. Put down your hands. Second category of the prayer, we're going to pray. But before then, there are some people that your faith needs to be stepped up. Forget about whatever name the medical world might have given it. With God, all things are possible. He asked, is there anything impossible for me to do? No, all things are possible for him to do. Now, there was a time I was in the church for the first time to minister about four years ago at their convention. And on the last day like this, on Sunday like this, those who I believe God for the womb, they came out and they were being prayed for. And God single-handedly spotted a woman among them. So, behold the, behold the congregation. I asked that question. Woman, forget about whatever the doctor might have said about you. Do you believe you can take in next month? I mean the next month to make it a month. She said she believed. Sir, they were all prayed for. The woman took in the following month. Sir, after that, every one of them was, every one of them was taken in. To the glory of God. Pastor back with me. After from before months, when the woman didn't know you money, but when she demanded or don't me. I was in that church again. Immediately I came back from England. I was in a hurry because I had to minister and minister in the Bible again on Sunday afternoon at that convention. So immediately I finished from the altar. I just went to the car. Ready to come back to Ibadan for that administration on that, Saturday after, I mean, that Sunday afternoon. And I saw a woman running after me. She met me at, at the point of entering the car. I said, sir, this is the baby. I was the one of the people you prayed for when you came then. And I carried the baby. I was singing. Your own miracles will come to. In the name of Jesus. Now lift up your hands again.
Lord, your word says we conquered the dragon by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. They have heard that you have been doing it for people. Their own will not be an exception. In the name of Jesus, beyond the obstacle, beyond the hindrance, beyond medical terminology or conclusion, you will carry your babies in the name of Jesus. Echoes of rejoicing shall be heard from the tabernacle. In the name of Jesus. By this time next year, according to the time of the law, you will carry your babies. In fact, one of you, you will give back to a set of twins. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are more than what people say. You can go back to your seat. More than what people say. You are more than what people say. And the house takes money, and you have an ab abandoned project, or there is a project at hand that has refused to grow, or to appreciate, or to grow. Can you come forward? Project could be in diverse forms. You have been experiencing some forms of stagnancy, retrogression. The Lord will break that yoke today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Marika Sandali Barika Shendele Bos. Now let me give you for who has who has pro, I mean building projects. It's abandoned or it has refused. It will grow. Amen. Now listen, sir. That was a time the first house God built for us at Ring Road. Before we passed in, I, I went there to do a night VG and a friend of mine followed me. We were both of both of us were together in that house before we passed in for night VG. And when we finished, I was moved. I said, because you followed me. If I don't believe me, renting you. Money because I've shown love. Money more than what God has done for me would do for you. And he said, Amen. Today he has four different buildings, solid in this city. Sir, anyone that is building house, they always call me because I carry grease out of English have been prophesying to them they have been finishing their projects that was the time God was telling me do you know the house you are living in it will give you another one one thing that I don't doubt God sir I can be surprised but I will never doubt him I said don't worry Lord I believe you sir we are living in our second house on Ring Road to the glory of God, the house is a combination of duplex and bungalow. When my friends will come, they say, ah, this is too much. Why don't you rent part of it? I say, rent. This is Jesus' heaven. It's the heaven of grace. Sir, anybody outside the country, whether I know them or either my pastor's friends know, know them, just on recommendation, they, they, they stay with us. Accommodation free. Feeding free. From anywhere, I have been receiving visitors from I mean, UK, South Africa, America, Canada. They stay there. I said, This is what God wants to take to do, sir. Check where you go there. There's money over there. Buy yes, sir. To the glory of today, we have two houses in Ringo, on Ringo, sir. It was the same Ringo I was ejected out 1997. I was staying with somebody that was very close to me. In fact, it was when I invited me in. Shortly before I got married. I've been staying in there for a while. Look at the February 1997. Okay. Oh, I'm putting more, more, more. Oh, my Paris. Kai. Elay, my Paris. To the finishing stage. Amen. Now, sir. 
The same ring rule. That's why I said, sir, you better glory in your affliction because you produce your affluence. Glory, sir, in your mess because you produce a message. That day I went for a ministry, a program at Kubumosho. By the time I came back, Mobile were at Timon Sun, 1997 February. But if you bet with me, what did this man do? Ah. And you are silly. I've been staying with that person for since 1986. Yeah, Mojo, I've been In fact, my own blood, my, our firstborn. We had to live with people. But I born me on my yamu baba, baloba. Night ninety seven year, mbadi bread dismantled. Sir, dismantled muzo. What he can't let? We be a mushi ala one. Me ba one leo. We want to message you le.
of heaven. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it, Lord, and Amen. make me whole. Does anybody here have any high blood pressure? Lift up your hands. Or anybody with one kind of infirmity of the honor, lift up your hands unto heaven. Lord, it is written that in the evening they brought all those who are sick and diseased unto Jesus and he healed them all. In the same vein, I'm presenting your people with one challenge or the other in the area of their health. That Lord, you will heal them in the name of Jesus. Amen. By his stripes, it is written, you are made whole in Jesus' name. Amen. I decree concerning you, the balm of Gilead is released upon you. Amen. That blood pressure is regulated now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every rotney in the, in, in the body system, today is healed up in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are made whole. Amen. You are made whole. You are healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The yoke of infirmity is broken in your life. The yoke of infirmity is broken in your body. The Lord heals you. By the power of his Christ, I profess you healed. I proclaim you healed. I confirm you healed. By the reason of this word, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. You will come and give thanks unto the Lord because you can know but to give thanks. That project will finish in due course. Faster than imagined. Quicker than expected. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I commit this, your house, unto your hand. When I came in, though under construction, I could see the beauty of the Lord. That is the stage you are taken into. The stage of full beauty of God. I'm not surprised because this is the house of the Lord. Father, Moses said, he commanded the people that the Lord said, you should go to your house and bring in goods for the completion of the sanctuary of the tabernacle of the Lord. And it got to a time that they had to tell the people again, stop bringing, you have brought more than enough. This shall be testimony of this place in Jesus' name. Amen. You will never lack anything at every stage. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will shake the heavens. Amen. He will shake the heart. Amen. The treasures of the heart shall be brought in. Amen. The blessing from heaven shall overshadow this place. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. this house shall be built up to completion. Amen. Faster than imagined. Amen. Quicker than expected. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will touch the heart of men to bring. Amen. And out of the abundance they shall bring. Amen. They will not bring in pains. Amen. They will bring with joy. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As many that have had it in their hearts to bless this work. Lord, I pray you will bless them superfluously. Amen. That the cup will run over in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God Almighty. Sir, I just received the word that don't compromise the standard, sir. The standard with which you are going to build this house, don't compromise. Don't say because things are getting expensive, let's use the inferior. No, no. Get the most quality materials that Lord will supply. Amen. The one who has helped you thus far will not disappoint you. Amen. God does not do anything he will never complete. He does not commence anything he will never complete. He has commenced this place with you. He will bring it to completion. In the mighty name of Jesus. The glory of God has descended in a unique way. The presence of God is greater than ever before. The men will be blessed beyond measure. And they will bring into this house. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sir, in which is this place will be completed. With joy, it will be completed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, your kingdom is our most desired place. Lord, count us worthy of your kingdom. Together with our household. Count us worthy of eternal life. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for the church all over the world. And our household. In your mercy, Daddy. Count us worthy of your eternal kingdom. Count us worthy of eternal life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, when we shall see again or hear from one another, it shall be unto greater testimony. Amen. It shall be unto greater joy. Amen. It shall be unto greater grace. Amen. It shall be unto, unto greater power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And it shall be unto 
greater level of righteousness, Amen. higher level of holiness. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Is there anyone here who, have never, who has never given his life to Jesus Christ and you think you, there is a need for you to give your life to Jesus? You have never done so before. This is an opportunity.